Hello friends, it's me Genuine Coder. This is the first video in the Java multi-threading video tutorial series. In this series, we will learn about how to use threads properly in your Java application. Multi-threading is a very important topic in any programming languages because modern processes have more than one course like quad core and octa core. So in order to make maximum use of the processor, we have to write our program in a multi-threaded fashion. So in this video tutorial series, we will start with the basics. We will see how a thread works and uh, uh, how can we create threads in Java and gradually we will move on to more complex parts of multi-threading in Java. So let's see the first point. The first point is when you start a program, a process and a thread is started. So when you run a program, it will be starting one process. Each process, each program when running has a separate unique process and each process create one thread by default. Let me show you what I meant by this. If you look at the task manager, in the processes section, you can see a number of processes like this. So whenever you run a program, a process will be created. In the task manager, in the process tab, you cannot see threads here. I mean, we can't know how many threads this business ID is running, but you can see that there is only one process associated to the NetBeans. If, if I run another program, let's say calculator, then you could see that one process is created for this calculator and it has more processes attached to it. I mean, there is a runtime broker process and a calculator process. I mean, this is internal to Microsoft Windows and we don't have to worry about it. So if you look at the performance section and you uh, look at the CPU, you could see that there, is, there are 197 processes currently running in my system and there are 2669 threads that is currently active in my system. So I have like eight cores in my processes in my processor and there are 197 processes and 2651 threads so each program will be having at least one process and at least one thread we will talk about the difference between threads and process in a in upcoming videos so that is the, just the basic idea of a process and a thread now a program can have multiple processes so usually when a program starts it will have one process and one thread and each process can have as many threads as they want but some programs can have more than one processes now a very good example for multi-process application is google chrome if you check the go if you start your google chrome and check the task manager you could see that there are many processes running for the same application so for under google chrome you could see that this many processes is currently running remember process is different from a thread we cannot see the number of threads running we can only see the number of processes running so there are many advantages and disadvantages when using different processes instead of different threads remember this point a process can have multiple threads a a program can have multiple processes so it is like that so one advantage of using multiple processes in google chrome is even if one tab crashes the other tabs won't be affected but but this is one of the reason why google chrome has more memory requirement because it uses different processes for different tabs now let us come back to the slide and the third point is a process can have multiple threads so our application will be running under a single process just like any normal application and within that process we can create as many threads as we want okay so that is the third point and then the last point the single thread that starts by default is called main thread so when you run an application i said a default process and default thread will be started and the name of the first thread that is started is called main thread now let us come come to 
the NetBeans. Let us open the NetBeans and see the main thread for ourselves. Now I have a project scattered in NetBeans. It is an empty project. There is no source code so far. So let us create our first source code. I am putting this under chapter one. I will post this code in GitHub so that you guys can check the code by yourself. So let us create the first file and I'm going to name it as chapter one and we have chapter one source file. So as you can see that when you run a program, it starts from the uh, main method that is public static void main. This is the starting point in your Java application. And I said by default, there will be one thread created. In order to get that thread, you can use thread.current thread. So this will return a thread for ourselves. So thread th equals Thread dot current thread. This will th return the thread that is currently executing this line. At this point, we don't have any special thread. It is just the main thread. So if I s out, if I print the thread, I can print the name using dot get name. So I have a thread which is the main thread, and I am going to print the name of the thread. So I am na naming as current thread, so I will be displaying like this th dot get name. And let us just run our program. This is the first execution in this video series, and you can see that current thread name is called main thread. So this is created by the Java JVM architecture. I mean, this is the default thread, it is not manually created, it is automatically created. Now you will be wondering how to set the name for the thread for example let's say in our program we have like 10 threads 10 threads and program crashed in one thread and we want to know which thread caused the exception so in such cases for in such cases let's say you want to know the name of the thread and if we don't give any names it will be hard to track down the issue to a specific thread so java allows naming giving name for certain threads so i'm going to name it as th dot set name. using the set name method i'm going to name it as my thread so by default the thread name was main now i set the name to my thread and let's see what is the updated name so th dot get name if i run the program you can see that current thread is my thread the thread name is changed and one more thing that i have to show you is about the process so i'm going to make this program sleep for a moment because if i execute this and go to task manager it will be over within a couple of milliseconds so i'm going to make it sleep for let's say 10 seconds let us make it sleep for 10 seconds okay so it will be stuck at this point for 10 seconds so we will have enough time to check in the task manager and if i run this program and go to task manager you could see that there is netbeans ide and java platform ac library so this is the process that is created for that program let me run that again with a little bit more time so when i run this program it is creating another process within netbeans as you can see here so you may be wondering why it is not a separate process it is because this is not a standalone program we are creating or we are running our program within another program called netbeans id so if you were running this program uh, using double click as a normal application it will be listed within this apps instead of within NetBeans ID. So that's it guys that's the introduction about Java thread we just barely started we will start slowly and we will learn more about threads in the upcoming videos. As always thank you for watching this video.